Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Ahmad for Idionics and this is Mastering Docker Course. This is Section 3, Discussing Docker Containers. Now, let's have a look at a very important aspect, another very important aspect of Docker and one of its features that makes it awesome, which is isolation. Let's see, this is one, uh, this is one way Docker isolates containers from each other, which is the PID namespace. Now, before we discuss PID namespaces, let's have a quick refresher about Linux or Unix processes or the process model. In Unix or Linux, processes are numbered by a unique identifier, a numeric identifier that is called the process ID or in short the PID. The processes in Linux or Unix start with process number one or process with the ID number one. This is the first process that starts when the system boots the first time and it always, always has the ID of one. It cannot have any ID other than one and this process is responsible for launching all the other processes on the system. All the child processes on the system get, 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 that gets launched when the system boots is started by the process with ID number one. And its name differs from one system to another. In some systems it's the init, in some other systems it is the upstart, and so, and so on. So what does this have to do with Docker? As we said earlier in this course, Docker is a Linux-based tool. So when it runs a container, this container is based on Linux operating system. So the container naturally contains processes and those processes have process IDs. So how does Docker manage those process IDs and what is the relation between those process IDs and the host process IDs? Let's have a look. In this example we are going to run a Docker container based on the BusyBox. So it's Docker 1 minus D and this time we are not going to do anything fancy. We're not going to link any containers with each other. Let's just give it a descriptive name. So this will be server1. Okay. And server1 is going to run a command called nc-l-p. And nc is a command in Linux. It's called netcat. And it is a network command. It's used to interact with the networks. And it is used to do a lot and a lot of things that are related to networking in Linux. This is just one of the things that nc can do, which is it will open a port, any port that you select, as long as it is not used by another program. And it will just listen at that port. So in this example, I'm going to open port 7070. This busy box container will just be running this port in the background. So if we run Docker PS, as you can see here, I am having this command and C-L must be listening on port 7070 and it is running in the background. Let's just create another server and let's call it server 2 or another container and call it server 2. It will also be based on busy box. And it's gonna have 8080 as the port. Okay, again, we have two containers running in the background. If you have a look at Docker PS, we're gonna see that we have two containers, one listening on 8080 and the other is listening on 7070. Now, let's have a look at the processes that are running inside those containers. Now, if you are a Linux user, you definitely know that in order to display processes on a running system, we use the PS command, the infamous PS with the minus EF or minus AUX options, depending on your exact usage, is used to display the processes running on a Linux box. So we can use docker exec command, and this is another subcommand of docker. This is a very useful subcommand. It is used to issue a second command to the container besides the primary command that this container is running. So in this case, I'm running here nc-l. This is the command that the, doc that the, that the container is running. I can pass in another command and instruct the container to run it for me using the exec subcommand, docker subcommand, as we're going to see here. Just pass in the name of the container, which is server1, uh, and I'm going to pass in the command, which is ps-ef. Now, if I press enter, I will see that I have only one process having the ID of 1, and that's natural because this is the primary command of the container. Then another process having the number of 5, which is ps-ef. This is just the process that I have used to display this output. Okay. Now let's run the same command on server 2 and see what happens. As you can see here I have exactly the same output. I have here process PID1 displaying in C-L-P and it's listening on port 7070 and I have another process with the ID of 1 and it is serving a totally different command which is NC-L-P and it's listening on port 8080. As you can see here we have two PIDs and they are totally different than each other. They are totally serving a different purpose. They are in complete isolation from each other. And they are also in complete isolation 
of the host operating system. So this is Ubuntu, as I've mentioned before. If I run ps minus p and I see f here, you're gonna see that I have a large number of processes running on the system, the largest number of which is 3787. So it makes sense that if Docker is using the host process IDs to generate the PID of its new process, it's gonna use, for example, 3788 or 3789, depending on the last PID that was used in this host operating system. But Docker, because of its isolation techniques and its protection, it is putting both containers or it's putting each container in a separate namespace or PID namespace with a range of process IDs that is totally independent of other containers and it is totally independent of the host operating system. So that is one of the nice features of Docker and it also adds to the protection and security model that Docker provides. And if you want to override this behavior, which of course isn't, isn't a recommended behavior, you can add minus minus PID host when you create or run the container. So I, can, I could have run this container like this. Let's stop server one. Okay, now let's delete server one. Okay, now when I create the command again, the container again, as you can see here, I can pass in here minus minus PID and I choose host. Okay, if I click enter and then I want to run the same command that I have run to see the process is running in the server. As you can see here, I am having the process is running in the host operating system. As you can see here, this, these are all the processes running on the operating system. It is available in the container. It is viewable in the container. And that is of course a security risk. I cannot even see the process that I have been already running, which is NC. Okay, here it is. It's NC minus L minus P, and it's listening on 7070. It's having the process ID of 3981. Okay, so as you can see here, using minus minus PID and passing in the host option makes the container aware and takes into account the PI, the process, the PID namespace of the host. And again, this is not a recommended practice. And this brings us to the end of this lecture. My name is Ahmad for Avionics and see you next.